Hi everybody, it's Tatiana, and I want to just do a short intro to let you know that black lives still do and always will matter. Black everything matters, and if that is not something you agree with, then this is not the space for you, and you are invited to leave. Hi everybody, it's Tatiana and today I'm coming to share with you my review of Daughters of the Stone by Dalma Llanos Figueroa. This was the hashtag read solid book club read for the month of March and I was super excited that this book was chosen because this book has been on my shelf for a good five years I think. Possibly more. Um... And yeah, I wanted to get to it and I'm so glad that we did because this book was so good. I will start with quickly reading a little bit of the synopsis. It is the mid 1800s. Fela, taken from Africa, is working at her second sugar plantation in colonial Puerto Rico where her mistress is only too happy to benefit from her impressive embroidery skills. But Fela has a secret. Before she and her husband were separated and sold into slavery, they performed a tribal ceremony in which they poured the essence of their unborn child into a very special stone. Fela keeps the stone with her, waiting for the chance to finish what she started. When the plantation owner approaches her, Fela sees, her better op sees a better opportunity for her child and allows the man to act out his desire. Such is the beginning of a line of daughters connected by their intense love for one another and the stories of a lost land. Maddie, a powerful healer and noted craftswoman, is grounded in a life that is disappearing in a quickly changing world. Concha, unsure of her place, doesn't realize the price she will pay for rejecting her past. Elena, modern and educated, tries to navigate between two cultures moving to the United States where she struggles to keep her family together. And Carissa turns to the past for wisdom and strength when her life in New York falls apart. The stone becomes meaningful to each of the women, pulling them through times of crisis. Dama Llanos Figueroa shows a great skill of warmth, of great skill and warmth in telling in the telling of this heartbreaking inspirational story about mothers and daughters and the way in which they hurt and save each other. So, the first thing that I will say about this book is that each daughter is a, is like there are chapters within, but each daughter is is, is a section. So we start with Fela, who comes to Puerto Rico and the statement that is made by Thela's coming off of the boat is so strong and in that opening sequence we see who Thela is, who the plantation owner is, who the mistress of the plantation owner is and who the overseer is as far as their character, their place on the plantation and how they handle new things. Uh, Thela is what starts this line of these women and Dama Llanos Figueroa is Afro-Puerto Rican and I have never read as to, to my immediate remembrance. I have never read a book that focuses on the slaves who were brought to Puerto Rico as part of the transatlantic slave trade. And I, of, of, of everything else that's in this book that's great, I really appreciated that. I also appreciated the history of the stone and the significance of the stone for each of these children. You have this small simple object that holds so much power and each time they are the child the girls are struggling the daughters I keep saying children girls the daughters as you go through the lineage because this story is being told by Thela's great great granddaughter. Each time they go through something that is difficult for them this stone helps ground them this stone that started this ritual of that that revolved around continuing the familial line grounds them and helps bring them either bring them back mentally and emotionally where they need to be or helps to guide them where they need to go and I love those types of stories that are around the beauty of a family heirloom and the fact the simplicity of this the simplicity of the physical family heirloom but the 
emotional and spiritual connection is of this is absolutely beautiful there is also um i don't want to say it because it's part it's not in the synopsis so this would be spoilers uh, so I'm not going to say specifically, but there is also homage given to African deities and connections to the African deity by the daughters as the story goes along. And that also plays a huge role in how uh, how things are passed down from daughter to daughter and how traditions are passed down. Just as like with any generational story, the closer the generation gets to what is the modern day, the further away it gets from those rituals and traditions that brought the family peace and sustained the family spiritual, spirit, the family's spirituality um, over the years. And we get to see that happening on the page with these characters. You have the mother of the daughter who is attempting with all that she can to hold the daughter in to what this, what our tradition is. And you don't have to go anywhere else because everything that you need is right here. And not only is everything you need right here, but I'm right here. So you don't have to go anywhere else. And then you also have the drive and the desire of the daughter to go beyond where they are to go beyond this place that we have been living for generations and experience life off of this compound because there is more out there and I want to see it and each time there's reticence on the side of the parent to let the child go and the child is determined to go and determined even more so because the parent is like you can't go you gotta stay you my baby and the child just wants to, to get away. And as that happens without the benefit of an attempt to meld the two, as, as the child goes away, the customs fall away from the child. And I think it's very good that that is on the page because for those who don't realize that this is what they've experienced in life and I think to an extent we've all experienced that in life but we don't see it to be able to actually see it on the page calls to that part or at least it did for me it called to that part of me who's walked away or attempted to walk away from some of the traditions that I know have been had on both sides of my family over the years that were powerful and beautiful traditions and strengthening, fulfilling um, traditions for my family that I no longer participate in. Um, really couldn't at this point also because COVID. Um, but that is absolutely beautiful. And there's so much more that is in this story about relationships between mothers and daughters, relationships between husbands and wives, relationships between friends and family, and the importance of the community, and how the community, just as family traditions can be healing, so the com so can the community as well. And there's, there are so many facets to this book that are absolutely beautiful and absolutely affirming. And you also get to see on the page instances of abandonment where you have the parent who disappears from the life of the child or for being in the forefront of the life of the child either because of some traumatic experience that happens or because the child does not want to hold on to those traditions so they separate themselves from the traditions or the desire to move away and experience more than what is just had in this little area of this little town in Puerto Rico where I currently live. So it's I, the character in the book, not I, me. So there's so much in this book to digest and to think about. And it was really, really great discussing this with the members of the hashtag Read so Lit book club and the author joined us for our discussion at the end of the month. And we had a discussion at the middle of the month as well. And having this book club, thank you Didi for creating it. Having this book club available is just, 
it's really nice <laughs> I can't say it more I can't say it in like a better way than that it's just it's really nice and it's really beautiful to share these stories that we are reading with other people and to participate in discussions with people who are avidly reading it whether we agree about things that happen or the viewpoint of things that happened or not this whole experience is just absolutely gorgeous and like I said previously if you are not a member of this book club I will link the patreon in the description box below get on it y'all because we have such a good time the discussions are so fruitful and there's so much to learn we're learned from the members of the book club I'm, this is not going to turn into a review of the book club because that's actually what's about to happen I'm going to stop if you want to if you want to know what it's like join Check the link below. Uh, so yeah, that's all that I'm going to share about the review for this book. The author did share with us that this is book one in a five book series and book two will be released in 2022. Guess what? I'm getting it. So if you like, and also it's a companion novel. It's not a direct sequel. So even if you haven't read this book, you can read book two, you can purchase and read book two or borrow from the library and read book two. Just do what I do and purchase it. And then you'll just have it. And just like this, whenever you get to it, you get to it. Because I've had this for about five years. So that's all that I'm going to say about Daughters of the Stone by Dama Young Nose Figueroa. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a good week, weekend, whenever you see this video. Peace out.